If you've watched my five previous videos in this series on preparing your files for press, you're now ready to output final files for the printer. You'll likely be providing your files in one of two ways, or a combination of both. The first way is to package up all of your source files, in other words, your final InDesign file, all of your linked images, and your fonts, compressing them all and transmitting them to the printer. Or you'll be exporting to a high-quality press-ready PDF. The advantage of this is that you're sending just one single file to the printer, and not an entire archive of linked images and various fonts that the printer will need to load. However, you should check with your printer to determine what final deliverables work best for their workflow. Often they'll ask you to provide both source files and a PDF. I'm going to talk about how to prepare your files in both ways, and I'll start with packaging up your source files. Now it is possible to manually package your files by gathering up all of your linked images and fonts and placing them together in a folder, but you do run the risk of perhaps missing something. Or if you're moving files from one folder to another, your links could become broken and then your printer will end up with an InDesign file and a bunch of images that are no longer linked, and this can cause, this can cause some problems. We can avoid this from happening by having InDesign package all of our files for us via an automated process. To do this, we can go to File, Package, or keyboard shortcut, Command, Shift, Option, P. And this brings up sort of a pre-press status overview of many of the issues that we've discussed in our previous videos. For example, here it tells us how many fonts are being used in our document and whether any are missing. It tells us the number of images, linked images that are in our document and whether they are any are missing or modified or embedded, and uh, it also shows us what types of inks are being used. Process versus spot. Of course, we're using only process colors in our document. Everything's looking pretty good. I'll click here on fonts, and just more information about each font being used in our document. I want to take a look at the status column here, and we'll notice that it's a list of OKs, which is good. OK is always a good thing. So that's fine. I'm going to take a look at our links and images. And again, if it says links, linked in the status column, that means that we're in pretty good shape. You can also see some more information up here on the top. I'll click on colors and inks and see we only have process colors in our document, no spot colors. So things are looking fine. Print settings and external plugins we can pretty much not worry about. So I'm going to go ahead and click package. This brings up this printing instructions dialog box, and here we can just enter our contact information, company, address, phone, fax, email address, and here this can be rather useful if you have some special instructions that you want your printer to pay attention to. I usually provide this in a separate email to my printer or over the phone, but um, it's always good to, you know, re reaffirm or, uh, you know, repeat information if you need to, so you can insert your instructions here. I'm going to click continue and let's go down to press prep that's the name of my folder where I want to save my packaged files and here are some check boxes of what we want included these top three are the default and I rarely ever change these this is uh, fonts which of course we want to include our link graphics and if we want any graphics that need to be updated to be updated we can click that these three I pretty much always leave unchecked and I'll click package and let's wait for the packaging to finish and before we know it it's over with. Now, I find it a bit strange that InDesign doesn't give us any sort of message confirming that the packaging is complete. It just does its thing and sort of disappears but that's the way it is so to make sure everything is in good shape I'm going to go to my finder and let's take a look at the new package files that InDesign added. Now what InDesign does is it takes the working file name, which is this one here, MPT Brochure Final, and it creates a folder based on that name and it adds the word folder at the end of it. I'll click on that and let's see what's inside. We have a fonts folder, which has been conveniently created with all our fonts inside. We have the instructions text file, which is the information based upon those instructions that we just were looking at that instructions dialog box. It's a text file. I'll click on links and here's all our linked images. And then of course here is our final InDesign file. 
Now one thing that confuses a lot of people is when I go back to my InDesign file, it's not clear if the file that is still open that I was working in before is now the new packaged file, this one, or whether it's the original working file that we originally were working with. And the answer to that is it's not the packaged file. That file is never open during the packaging process. It's treated as a completely separate entity. So the file that's open is my, I guess what would be considered my old working file. So to avoid any confusion, I'm actually going to close this. And I'm going to take that old working file and I'm just going to move it into this old folder here where I tend to place any sort of obsolete files that I'm no longer working with, just to avoid any confusion. I don't have duplicate InDesign files floating around. And I'll click replace. And let's now go to our packaged InDesign file and let's create a press ready PDF. If you're only exporting the PDF and you never really had to worry about packaging these files to begin with, you'll just want to continue working in the InDesign file that you already had open. But it's always a good idea to sort of create a archive version of that file just in case you have to go back to that if perhaps um, the settings get are incorrect and you want to go back to a, a original working file. So let's open this guy. I'm going to shrink this window here so you can see everything. And let's export to PDF. To do that, I'm going to go to File, Export, or Command E, which is the keyboard shortcut. And let's take a look at the format list here, which is a whole bunch of different file formats that we can export to. I'm going to go with Adobe PDF Print. And I'll click Save. And now this brings up this what can be kind of an overwhelming box if you're looking at it for the first time. The good news is that there are some presets up here which we can use as a starting point. And let's take a look at these presets. We have high quality print. We have all these PDFX options here. We have press quality and we have smallest size and we have some presets that I've created for some other projects. Most people when they're creating a, a file for press would just we'll just choose press quality. That's not always a, a bad decision to make, but it's not really the, the best option. And the reason why is that press quality doesn't really handle transparency very well. I won't go into the technical reasons why if you choose press quality, most likely you'll be okay. But I generally recommend starting out with PDFX. You also have, and I recommend PDFX1. We can go down here to PDFX4, which is the most recent version, but many printers don't really have the technology to handle those types of files. So PDFX1 is an older version and just about everyone can handle it. It's a pretty safe bet. Now let's take a look at the general dialog box here. Everything's looking okay. I want to make sure that view PDF after exporting is checked so that the PDF will pop right up after we click export. I'm going to go to compression. Everything's fine here. Marks and bleeds. I do want to make some changes here. I want to select crop marks and I want to select page information. Page information just inserts some basic info at the bottom of the PDF, such as the file name, when it was created, uh, just some basic reference information that the printer might find useful at some point. Here's something that's very important, which is the bleed and slug. We want to check use document bleed settings because we want the PDF to actually reflect the bleeds that are in our document, which we created in our last video. So we see that we have an eighth inch all the way around. That is the bleed that we've set up in our document. So we definitely want to make sure this is checked. Click output. That's all fine. Advanced. Double check here to make sure that high resolution is selected under transparency flattener. And security and summary we don't really have to worry about. So let's cross our fingers and click export. And here is page one of our PDF. And we see our crop marks up here and around on all corners. We see our page information down here, file name, date, and time. Now let's take a look at our, at our crop marks. I'm going to turn on my rulers and I'm going to drag guides so that they cover those crop marks in the upper left. And remember when I was talking about bleeds? 
Well here we can see that our bleeds are extending outside of the trim as we had indicated. That's an eighth of an inch bleed right there. And I'll drag another guide over this crop mark over here. And we see the bleeds on this side. And how about I just drag one more guide down across the bottom. And there's our bleeds down there. So what the printer is going to do is they're going to chop off right there, right where that bleed is and then across horizontally across the top and vertically down the right side horizontally across the bottom and then our brochure is going to be scored and folded and that's how it works. Let's just go down to page two and just to take a look make sure our fonts loaded that our color looks okay everything is looking really nice I'm really happy with this so let's let's zip this baby up and send it off to the printer I'm going to close out of this. I'm going to close out of my original InDesign file. Here are all the files that we're going to archive for the printer, including our new press ready PDF right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on my folder and I'm going to choose compress and we'll just zip this guy up. We see the compression happening here. And now here's our zipped file. And what I can do is uh, contact my printer tell them that my file is ready. There's a good chance they'll direct us to their FTP site. We can upload it to their FTP site. We could email this if it's not too large, or we could even burn a CD the old-fashioned way and hand deliver it. And congratulations! We've successfully prepped our files for the printer. And by following the steps I've outlined in this series of six videos, you should now feel confident about preparing files that will print correctly on press and avoid any hiccups. Now in a future video I'm going to discuss InDesign's pre-flight feature which was introduced in CS4 and which makes many of these steps a lot shorter so that we don't actually have to manually sort of check for each and every little thing. The pre-flight feature does this for us but it's a good idea to know what pre-flight is checking for so that we can designate the settings on pre-flight correctly and continue avoiding any problems on press with our files. Feel free to ask me any questions at howie at fortuitouspub.com. That's howie at f-o-r-t-u-i-t-o-u-s-p-u-b.com. And check out my blog at indesignjunkie.com. Thanks again for watching.